Hello and thank you so much for tuning in to the Dare to Share channel once again. We're continuing along in the readings of Dr. Miles Monroe, um, Rediscovering the Kingdom, the Expanded Edition. We're on Chapter 8, The Priority of the Kingdom. Before we do begin, I just want to give you some words of encouragement. If you're reading this book and it's not fully um, making sense to you, Holy Spirit, the highest spirit of all, no matter what comes against us, you are a constant in our lives. Holy Spirit, the highest spirit of all, creator of everything that there is. Lord, our only small minimalistic thinking can only fathom what we now see in, exist, in existence on this planet and what you've given us the opportunity to explore and bring to light. Lord, there are principalities in dark places that seek to take away the little that we do understand of your kingdom. Father God, right now, in your precious name, I ask and I pray, Lord God, that everyone within the sound of my voice, within the reach of this internet, that is able to listen to kingdom messages, messages with the intent of the kingdom of heaven, that they would be confounded by truth, that they would become moved by truth, that they would understand this message of the kingdom and that this seed would fall on good, healthy soil, the soil of their minds and their hearts. Lord God, I ask you in your precious name, for your name's sake, to rebuke the devourer who comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy even the smallest understandings that we get of the kingdom. Lord, scripture tells us that whenever one person hears the message of the kingdom, the evil one himself comes to remove even that one small morsel of understanding. But Father God, today, today we rebuke the devourer because we know that the kingdom of heaven is laid up for the righteous, for the meek, for the humbled. Your word says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom. Lord God, we give you everything in us today that you would be God above everything and that you would show yourself mightily before us today, Lord God. Give us an understanding and allow us to maintain that understanding and to pass it along to others, those who are much less fortunate than us, Lord God. Allow us this opportunity. Allow us to see past all the um, small, minute things that don't really matter. Allow us to see past those religious views those things that don't really matter. Give us the opportunity to receive, to understand, and to apply the kingdom message to our everyday lives. In chapter 8, The Priority of the Kingdom, Dr. Monroe does just that for us, Lord God, and we appreciate and we thank you for allowing his spirit to dwell with us for the short time frame that it did. Father God, we ask all of these things in your precious name, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things, Lord. The one who paid the ultimate sacrifice, who knew no sin, the one who came to redeem mankind, who was the father of human, all people, not just a select few or a certain group, but all, he died for all for everyone. We ask these things in his name, O Lord. Lord God, you are wonderful to us. Your kingdom is greater than any on earth, any kingdom. Lord, we ask these things in your son's precious name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Friend, if you've been listening along to me 
um, while I read these awesome words and works of Dr. Miles Monroe as the Spirit of God gave him the ability to apply this information in his very own life. If you've been listening along to the works of Dr. Miles Monroe, um, my prayer today is for you to receive this gift, to receive this thing called the kingdom, because scripture does tell us that the kingdom is for us, not a religion, um, not a, a certain sect of um, being, but God wants to give us an opportunity to be redeemed. That life we had with him way back in the beginning of things, before the fall, the way that he was able to commune with Adam and Eve, just um, walking in the garden. God wants to give that opportunity back to us, but it is up to us to accept it and to allow him to be Lord of our lives and for you to pick up your rightful place as a king in his kingdom, not as a servant, but as a king, as a son and a daughter of the King of Kings. I pray that today that you would accept that mandate over your life, that you would allow him to have full control, to have full uh, dominance in your life, and so that you would be welcomed into his kingdom. One thing that I know for sure after having been a kingdom citizen um, for several years now, full understanding of it, living it, walking within that, one thing that I know for sure, we will all die. And our soul will need to rest somewhere for eternity. Your spirit has to sit somewhere for eternity. You make that decision while on earth. That's what I know. I've had the privilege to um, watch people move on to the next phase of life um, as their spirit leaves their physical bodies. And some of the conversations have been um, most just uh, I, I don't want I don't want to use the wrong words because the person that comes to mind um, this individual expressed to me that they were afraid of dying and God allowed me to help this individual to first of all express their belief in God and then second of all to welcome them into the kingdom, to give them the opportunity to accept the kingdom of God. And I fully believe, just as the thief on the cross who expressed to Jesus, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. I fully believe that that is all we need. I believe it, that in that moment, only God knows the heart of each of us. Only God knows the heart. And there was no rituals, no traditions that were followed um, on the cross when the thief asked um, for, for God, for Jesus to remember him in his kingdom. No, friend, Jesus admi admonished him and Jesus acknowledged that within that man on the cross next to him. And that's what I shared with the gentleman who was passing on into the next phase of living. If you just believe, if you just believe, friend, God is able to do all things. With man, no, it can be questioned. But with God, all things are possible. I believe that if you would express your belief to him, that you believe in what he's done, that you believe that he came and he walked on earth in flesh, wrapped in flesh, experienced everything known to man and did not sin, walked and lived and breathed with men of his, men just like him and had nothing inappropriate done, looked at women and did not withheld, withhold them inappropriately. He experienced every walk, every walk that we have here on earth that we go through and yet he was found without sin the ultimate sacrifice and when you come to a full understanding that that is possible and he did it then God knows that we are able if we believe 
and he left a comforter for us. He left someone here for us to help us walk this walk, to help us on our kingdom journey back home, to help us back home as ambassadors in the earth. We have a governor on the earth with us called the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that you would fully grasp and understand this kingdom, this kingdom message. Because if you take the time, if you take the time to really study this thing and to really show yourself, then there will be no message that you won't be able to see the tactic of the enemy in. There, there will be no, ob no obstacle in front of you that you will not already have the strategy to overcome. I fully believe today that we are witnessing the hand of God even in this moment, even in this moment right now as I'm talking with you. Anyone within earshot of my voice, I pray that you would just believe. In the next chapter of um, Rediscovering the Kingdom, Dr. Monroe lays out how much of a priority the kingdom is and how we as mankind should be a, a, aware of the two worlds that we're living in. We are not from this world. We are of another place. We are as people with, um, for lack of a better term, dual citizenship. You have um, your kingdom citizenship, which is what you had back pre-fall. When I say pre-fall, I mean those times before Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the garden. You have that citizenship, and then you have your earthly citizenship. And guess what? Spiritual things always trumps. No pun intended there. Spiritual things will always physical things there's always something happening in the physical realm based on the spiritual realm what we see happening in our lives during our generation right now is a result of what is happening in the spiritual realm now the children of light we ought to be praying often as a matter of fact scripture tells us that we should pray without ceasing The children of darkness, we can see exactly what their um, what their prayers look like. When evil seems to be out doing good in the earth in the earthly realm, people suffer. And friend, I know you're not blind. I know that you can see how how many people live in poverty, live in lack live without the bare necessities all because of those resources that God gave us that God created for us that are being um, held by greed evil exists because good people sit and do nothing we ought to always pray Dr. Monroe in this next chapter helps us to fully understand, to fully grasp what power we have based on the priority of the kingdom. Let's continue along in the reading. And my prayer is that your eyes will be open, your mind will be open, your heart is ready to receive, and that you will be able to apply this kingdom message immediately in your life. Stay tuned.